what is up everybody i'm back with another video bro and today we're gonna react to the real polo g story documentary by publish x into it bro I would double again a mirror and I drop the rakes. My year 7 4 11 tatted on my face. If you throw up the forks, I won't hesitate to let shots out the eight. Boogie in the eighties, trying to get them bricks out the way. Them boys won't smoke on my block, we gotta get away. Them versus us, man, it ain't no match anyway. You know who gon' lose like when the Cavs in the sixes play? Streets like man. Go you go in, pick a plate. And I ain't doing shit if it don't benefit my dinner plate. The streets like Madden before you go in, pick a play. <laughs> That was hard. That was hard. Taurus Barlett was born January 6, 1999 in Chicago, Illinois. Named after his father, Taurus Sr., his grandmother named him after the Zodiac sign because she believed in everything a Taurus stood for. Raised in a rough neighborhood on the north side of Chicago, Marshall Field Apartments or 1300 block, just a few blocks away from Cabrini Green, which was notoriously known as one of the roughest housing projects in American history. Growing up, music was always a gift his family possessed, with his mom and sister both being exceptional singers. Taurus knew one day he'd grow up to be something special, and used to dream about being a boxer, ball player, or rapper. Even at an early age, he knew formal education wouldn't be the path to achieving these dreams. His mom stated he would often question his teachers at school about how his homework was going to relate to the path he wanted to take in life. His mom was hoping he'd grow up to be a state's attorney, so she did her best to keep a close eye on him and make sure he stayed out of the streets. By the time he was attending George Manier Middle School, he was already writing rhymes down in a notebook and freestyling during lunches. Rapping was just something he enjoyed doing at the time, and he didn't have any real way to Bro, what is this cut yet. you got, bruh? Oh my. Yeah, I'd never go to that bar ever again. By the age of nine, he had already written down a full-length song, complete with hooks and verses. Although he was in an area known for its violence, he managed to stay out of trouble pretty well all through his childhood, despite witnessing it firsthand. But it was almost inevitable that that would change, and it eventually did by the time he was in high school. He started caring less about school and would either not show up or come in late. Getting into fights became a regular thing, and before he knew it, he had been kicked out of two different high schools and was attending his third at Innovations High. This is around the time Lil Wayne's Carter IV was released, and he started to feel extremely inspired by it. In addition, rappers from his neighborhood like Ricky Rax and Blockheads were doing Young decent numbers online. He felt like he could really do it too. <laughs> when he was just 15, one of his close friends nicknamed T. Gucci was killed, and it really affected him. He knew it was time for him to take music seriously if he was ever going to make it. He felt he had an obligation to himself, his friends, and everyone around him to tell their stories. The only issue he had was getting to the studio to record and having some money to pay for the time. Watching his parents struggle, he knew it was going to be up to him to make some money and make it happen, so he started hustling. By his senior year, he was struggling badly in school, but he told himself he had to try and graduate just to prove a point to anyone who doubted him. His English teacher even made him freestyle after classes in exchange for passing him. People from his school and okay, neighborhood were also w starting teacher. to take notice of his skill and ambition and encourage him to start recording these freestyles. So you feel me? She wouldn't let me go off and do all that. But when I got older, you feel me? It's like, I don't want to ask you for this. I see you struggling and you need help yourself. So I'm going to just help myself. And I was chasing the whole rap thing. Everybody wasn't into that. Like my OG and my daddy, they wasn't into that. So it was like, I had to get the money myself and do it. In October of 2016, he eventually got in his studio after sneaking out of the house late at night. He recorded his first remix to 187, and then his first original song, ODA, which he had freestyled and wrote down years before. The songs were released under the name Polo G, aka Mr. Do Too Much. Polo was one of his favorite brands growing up, and the G stood for his friend T. Gucci, who had passed. A month later, he got online and released ODA Part 2, followed by multiple other singles that he would drop throughout his senior year into 2017. A lot of his earlier music were remixes to other songs, but he knew if he was really going to blow, he needed more original tracks, mm -hmm. and more importantly, he needed to film music videos for them. Yeah, music videos. He dropped his first official music popular. video with his two friends in June of 2017 on the song Back That Ass Up. This was the first time people outside of his hood would be able to put a face to his music. Almost immediately after, he filmed a second music video to a song called Check Me Out. But this one was unique because he actually filmed it before his senior prom and was the first video to receive a few thousand plays on YouTube. At the time, that meant everything to him. After graduating high school, Polo started to head down a bumpy path. And although he avoided trouble, trouble started to catch up to him. Before I put it in, I 
Uh, on New Pula Year's Day of 2018, Pula was part of a car theft that led police on a high-speed chase before crashing the car and being arrested. His life was starting to go down two very different paths at the same time. On one side, he was starting to gain a small following of fans with his songs like Troublesome. And on the other side, he was getting arrested for multiple crimes, spending time in and out of jail and taking drugs like Ecstasy and Xanax. At this point, his life could have gone in either direction. But in early 2018, he dropped Welcome Back, and with every new drop, he was getting a little more plays than the last. Everything changed in March of 2018 after dropping a remix to Lil Durk and G. Bro, I, bro, I know that feeling of like you starting from the bottom and then just seeing yourself just elevate more and more with every song is like a bro that gotta be crazy bro like shoot i'm doing the same thing bro jason the youtube gene bro herbos never cared the remix blew up almost instantly and it's easy to tell why if you listen to the first line of the song this would be polo's first song to ever receive over a million plays and officially put his name in front of a whole new audience of people all of Chicago was bumping his remix and everything was starting to fall into place. He could start to see his dream unfolding in front of him. When I was in the county, that was like my fifth, sixth time being locked up back to back. Even though it was petty stuff, it was like some sit downs made me really think and I had to learn like, yeah, like this ain't what I want to do because it could get worse. Unfortunately, shortly after, he found himself incarcerated once again and was forced to spend a little time in Cook County Jail. While locked up, he started to really think about everything and the opportunity he was being given. He realized he needed to get out of the streets and really focus on music while he still had a buzz. He started writing down songs and planning out what he wanted to do when he was released so he could be prepared. Although he wrote down a number of songs, there was one he felt stood out from the rest. He was prepared to take a singing approach this time, as compared to his Chicago drill he had been focused on before. After being released, he linked up with his engineer, DJ AO, who was waiting for him to record. At the time, Polo didn't know DJ AO was also making beats. When he got to the studio and showed him what he had written down, he was surprised when AO started playing beats he felt fit the song. The two started constructing the song, but were unable to finish it that night because Polo was getting frustrated while singing for the first time. Polo went home with a copy of the instrumental and worked on it until he felt it was ready. He knew the song was going to be different, and he knew it was going to do numbers. After getting his flow down, he went back to the studio and recorded finer things. Yeah, I got to make peace once blood get to spilling. Hey, look what's get to show like he filming. Yeah, my friends died to a don't that feeling. feeling. I'm popping ecstasy that on me with the healing. The Finer Things music video dropped on August 25th, 2018. And his life changed forever. Like, and you Finer Things got over 245,000 views. And his a lot first of people died. He showed no signs of slowing down. You got God on your side and it's hard to do right. Ass. This is also when he decided to simplify his name by taking the Mr. Do Too Much out and sticking to just Polo G. Just two years after recording his first songs, he was catching the attention of major labels and blogs were being written yeah, one no hero, so we'll Although multiple people bills. were now trying to interview Polo, he chose to stay true to his city and did his first interview with legendary Chicago YouTube channel, Zach TV. Zach TV was known for interviewing Chicago artists from every neighborhood, but he had tragically died just a month before. Polo paid homage hey, by being tough. interviewed by Zach's brother, who was trying to keep his legacy alive to this day. Over the next couple months, Polo started getting booked for back-to-back -back shows and stopped dropping music as frequent as before. He knew with the attention he was now getting, everything he released needed to be up to par with the bar he had raised on himself. He was gaining thousands of new fans daily, and of course with new fans comes critics as well. Polo still needed to prove that he was here to stay, and he had made it this far without dropping a single mixtape or album. No. This is the point that can make or break artists, and we've seen plenty come and go. The last time I was incarcerated, it was like, that's when I first made the Finer Things track. When I took that different approach, I liked it that more than just being straight by heavy, but you feel I still be open to switching it up. In late 2018, he started working on new music for an album. And, it's gonna be and shortly a after, he linked up with Lil TJ, a New York artist who was also starting to buzz. They recorded and dropped Pop Out, the first single off Polo G's upcoming debut album. Pop Out took off immediately. The song peaked at number 11 on the Billboard and shut down any thoughts of him being a one-hit wonder, spiraling his name into the mainstream. This was enough to trigger a bidding war between major labels. It was clear Polo G was going to be the next big thing out of Chicago, and everyone wanted a piece. He and his team eventually chose to sign with Columbia Records, and on June 6, 2019, his debut album, Die a Legend, was released on all platforms. The cover art featured eight of Polo's family and friends who had passed. In honor of them, he accomplished exactly what he set out to do two years prior. That Hall of Fame dropping soon? That's... 
That's gonna hit. Tell their stories, memories, and legacy in his raps with no filter. And that made me want to rap. I gotta speak up on this situation. Because I ain't only just speaking for me or telling my story. I'm telling his story. I'm telling his story. I'm telling his story. I'm telling everybody out his story. So you feel? That's the only way I can get that message across so we could be heard. Through 2019 leading up to 2020, Polo G remained a topic of conversation in mainstream rap. Despite also dealing with personal issues like his addiction to prescription pills, which led to a near-death experience in late 2019. I just, bro, like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, like, bro. You see what happened to, what's his name, Lil Xan, I think that was his name, Juice World and everything, bro. And y'all still pop pills, bro, I just don't understand, bro, like. I just, like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it, bro. Like, I really don't. Like, bro, if you're going to do something, bro, like, just smoke weed, bro. Like, literally just smoke weed, bro. It ain't nothing bad that happened to you smoking weed, bro. But popping pills and stuff, bro, you just asking for it, bro. Like, come on, bro. It motivated him to stay sober. And he started off 2020 strong with yet another hit song. Go Stupid after linking up with Stunner for Vegas and in a Lee Chapa. Shortly after his second studio album, The Goat was released, which peaked at number two, selling 99,000 copies its first week. This also solidified his well-deserved spot on the 2020 XXL freshman list. In just a few years, Polo G went from hustling on the block for studio money to selling out arenas and having both his albums go platinum. He's arguably been the most consistent young rapper to come up recently, and he's done more than prove he's here to stay. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm, it's no bang for me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're gonna let them bullets rain for me. And no, they for all this pain in me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on my soul. Can't let my heart turn cold. Have mercy on me. I, bro. I, oh my god. Hey, but that's gonna be the end of this video, bro. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we out, cuz.